All right, now in this video, we're going to be introducing a new concept called reference numbers. Now I've typed it up here to make it a little bit easier to read along with me. So let t be a real number, just like we've been talking about so far, um, our numbers t. The reference number t bar associated with t is going to be the shortest distance along the unit circle between the terminal point p determined by t and the x-axis. So I know that's a little wordy, so I want to have some examples. So an easy example first. Let's say I have t is equal to pi over 4. Right, so if t is pi over 4, I know starting from my initial position, I'm going to move an eighth the way around the circle, or a quarter way around this top of the circle. That puts me right here. Here's my p. This is t equals pi over 4. Now t bar is going to be the shortest distance between p, my terminal point determined by t, and the x-axis. Now it's very important to note that that's along the unit circle, right? I'm not talking about this distance here, right? That's wrong. That's not what I mean. I mean the shortest distance along the unit circle. So in this case, the shortest distance along the unit circle from p to the x-axis is going to be the same distance that I already traveled, isn't it? My, so my t-bar is going to be pi over 4. That is the shortest distance between p and my x-axis. All right, let's do a little bit more complicated ones. Let's say that I'm not going to be in the first quadrant this time. Uh, let's say I have a t equals 5 pi over 6. Right? Now we know that 6 pi over 6 is the same thing as pi, and pi is one half of the way around the circle. So 5 pi over 6 is going to be just short of that, isn't it? So I'm going to go almost all the way around my half circle. I'm going to stop right here. So this is my point P, and this is T equals 5 pi over 6. Now I want to know what T bar is. In other words, I want to know what the shortest distance between P and my x-axis is. Now it's easy to see here that that distance is going to be this right here, isn't it? I'm not going to go back the way that I came because it's a much shorter distance to just continue on the way I was going. So this is going to be my t bar. Now how do we calculate this out? Well, I know that if I went from my initial point all the way to, to the x-axis again here, that would be a total distance of pi. And I know that I've already gone a distance of 5 pi over 6, so if I subtract that, that's going to give me my total distance remaining to go to get to the x-axis again, isn't it? So pi minus 5 pi over 6, that's going to give me pi over 6, right? Because pi is the same as 6 pi over 6. So if t is 5 pi over 6, I have a t bar, or a reference number, of just pi over 6. All right, let's do another one. It's pretty straightforward, right? Let's say I have a t of, oh, I don't know. Let's say t is equal to uh, 17 pi over 3. All right, now this one's a little big, isn't it? So we want to keep in mind what we went over in one of our earlier videos. Note first that 17 pi over 3 Now for every 6 pi over 3, well, let me take this one step at a time, this is the same as 12 pi over 3 plus 5 pi over 3, isn't it? Now 12 pi over 3, that's the same thing as 4 pi, right? I can simplify this, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so I have 4 pi plus 5 pi over 3. Now this 4 pi, that just means that I'm starting from my initial position and I'm going around the circle two entire times. So this 4 pi, we can kind of ignore it, can't we, when we're talking about finding the terminal point. Now it, this, remember, this doesn't mean that 17 pi over 3 equals 5 pi over 3, that's not true. But the terminal point determined by 17 pi over 3 is the same as the terminal point determined by 5 pi over 3. Now 5 pi over 3, I'm going to go, remember 3 pi over 3 is pi, so I'm going to go 3 pi over 3 here, and I'm going to go another 2 pi over 3, that's going to put me about right here. So this is my p, and I have a, this is my t equals 17 pi 
over 3. Again, my p is the same as if we were looking at t equals 5 pi over 3. So remember, with these big values, as soon as it's bigger than 2 pi, we can take out all those increments of 2 pi and just look at these smaller values to find our terminal point p. Now coming back to our reference number here, my shortest distance between p and the x-axis along the unit circle, that's going to be this right here, isn't it? So this is going to be my t bar. Now if I started my, my initial point and went all the way around the circle, that would be 2 pi, wouldn't it? And notice I've already gone around the circle 5 pi over 3. Now 2 pi is the same as 6 pi over 3, so 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3 is just going to be pi over 3. So this distance between p and the x-axis, the shortest distance, that's my t bar, and that's going to be pi over 3. Okay, so these are just some examples of finding those terminal points. Now in general, we can kind of know which direction we're going to go based on what quadrant we're in. Okay, so if I have a t um, that gives me a p anywhere in this first quadrant, my reference number is going to be this distance here, right, from the point to this positive intersection on the x-axis. If I have any p over here in my second quadrant, I'm going to be looking at this distance here. Right? So let me back up a little bit. In this first quadrant, this distance t bar, this is going to be equal to whatever the t is, right? the reduced t after I take out all those increments of 2 pi. Right? If this is my t, that's the same thing as t bar. Now here, over in the second quadrant, my t bar is going to be equal to my total distance from the initial point to this point here, that's pi minus the amount I've already traveled to get to this p, so minus t, and we saw that in one of those examples. Now over here in quadrant 3, if I have a p over here, notice that um, I, my shortest distance is going to be going backwards, so I'm going to be saying, well, how much past pi have I traveled, right? That's going to be my shortest distance. So here in quadrant 3, my t bar is going to be equal to whatever my t was, my reduced t from my initial point to this terminal point, p, minus pi, right? Minus what I traveled to get to the x-axis. That's going to give me this difference, so t minus pi. And if I have something over here in the fourth quadrant, right, this t bar here, that's going to be if I had gone all the way around 2 pi minus what I traveled by t, right, just like in that last example. So an entire rotation is 2 pi, and my t got me to this point, so my t bar is going to be the difference between an entire rotation around the circle and what I've already traveled with my t. Right? So you don't need to remember these, this isn't something you need to memorize, but make sure that you look at these different formulas and that you can understand where they came from, and given a t in this quadrant, you'd be able to figure out how to find your t bar. All right, now in the next video, we're going to talk about how to use these reference numbers in order to find the terminal points in all of these quadrants, just based on that chart that we had before of those common terminal points.